the engines enjoy the summertime. They especially like it when the 4th of July comes around. They enjoy seeing all the stations decorated, the fireworks display at night, and most of all, the engine parade that some of them participate in. This year in particular, Milton was worried. You don't think Miss Carwell will cancel the parade, do you? He asked frantically. For the hundredth time this week, probably not, huffed Larry. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if she did cancel it, declared Julie. The other engines had to agree that Julie had a point. You see, the railroad has been having trouble with the heat lately. Heat can cause signal failures, switch failures, and even for tracks to buckle and bend. But we'll be traveling slow anyway, Milton said. So we could still have to parade heat or no heat. You only care so much because you're leading it this year, retorted Kevin. I should have led last year, Milton whinged. Larry only got to lead last year because Miss Caldwell took pity on him for causing an accident. Larry hissed furiously. Milton, he said, you can take that statement and shove it down your anyway. While Larry was telling Milton off, Amber and Roger had just woken up, getting ready to start work, when they heard a horn. I've never heard that horn before, Amber said to Roger. Just then, an engine similar to Roger was backing down next to them, pushing some interesting looking equipment. The new engine smiled when he saw Roger. Roger, it's been years. How you doing? Fine, he grunted. You two know each other? asked Amber. Oh, yes, we do, answered the new engine. He's my brother, after all. Roger, Amber smiled. We've worked together for many years, and you've never once mentioned you had a brother. Because I don't, he grumbled. Oh, I'm sorry, the new engine apologized. I was so excited to see my brother, I forgot my manners. I'm Titan. And I'm Amber, replied Amber. Very nice to meet you. Why are you here, questioned Roger. He's part of a new inspection train I ordered, said a very well-known voice. The angels looked over and saw that Miss Caldwell had walked up to them. He was supposed to originally arrive next week, but we've been having so many issues with the tracks lately, I've convinced his old owner to send him early. I'm happy to be aboard, ma'am. That's good, Miss Caldwell said. Now head to the station, please. Then you can start your inspection run. Yes, ma'am, Titan said confidently and rumbled away. Okay, Roger, out with it. Why do you have a problem with your brother? Asked Amber. We started on a short line together a few years ago. Roger began. Titan was always manager's favorite. He always got the important jobs and always got the sorry ones. Amber wanted to desperately say something, but decided to keep it to herself. Well, one day, we were involved in a runaway accident. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. But Titan and I were extensively damaged. So we were both hauled back to the workshops and Titan was repaired, but not me. While he was out doing work, I sat there in the back shop, just waiting on my repairs. You would think my so-called brother would speak up so I could be repaired, but he didn't. Eventually, Mr. Egan came by looking for an engine. I was sold to him as scrap value. He repaired me and now here I am. Wow, Amber sighed. We've known each other for years and you, you've never told me any of this. I don't like to talk about it, Roger huffed, but that's why I don't like my brother. If Mr. Egan hadn't came along needing a maintenance diesel, I probably wouldn't be here right now. Amber felt sorry for the two brothers and decided to try to help fix things between them. But she would never get the chance. Titan set off on his first maintenance run and did very well. He spent the rest of the week patrolling all the railroad lines, inspecting them for sun damage. Since Titan had such a long career as an inspection engine, he has become very eagle-eyed and can spot things that are wrong right away. 
He spotted that my load was loose on my flat car and warned me, Krista was telling Taylor one day. I like him, said Taylor. He's very kind and helpful, more so than his brother, huffed Krista. Now, Taylor and Krista had no way of knowing that on the other side of the freight cars, Roger had heard the whole thing. First he comes on the My Railroad, then he tries to take my friends. The nerve of him. Roger had always resented his brother, but hearing that statement from Krista made it even worse. Later that day, Roger cheered up slightly. He had been tasked with helping the workers decorate the station for the parade. But that relief was short-lived. The station agent came up to him. Roger, I've received word that you must pick up a ballast train from Denville and take it to Lake Junction. But what about helping with the decorations? Roger asked. Kevin's going to pick up from where you left off, the station agent replied. But if Kevin's in steam, why can't he just take the... Because you were told to take it, snapped the station agent, quickly losing his patience with the stubborn diesel. Now... Either you take the ballast train or I call Caldwell. Your choice. <laughs> Needless to say, um, Roger chose the ballast train. Meanwhile, Titan was headed home after a long day. He noticed as he passed through Elsie Village that the track didn't feel right. Like he always did, he made a mental note of it. Roger was in Denville picking up his ballast cars. His crew was performing a brake test when Titan came through. Watch out for the tracks in Elsie Village, he called. Roger didn't reply and was so full of resentment, rage, and jealousy that he intentionally ignored the warning. Roger traveled along the main line. He was hoping to get the job over with as fast as possible. He passed by Samaya, who was letting on passengers at Elsie Village Station. As Roger pulled away from her, Samaya gasped. She saw sparks and dust flying from Roger's train. Samaya then realized what had happened and blew her whistle loud. Roger, look out! Some of your cars have derailed! What? He shouted. His driver quickly put the train into emergency, but it was too late to do anything. The cars in the middle of Roger's train had derailed, some of them fouling the other track. This meant Samaya couldn't continue with her passenger train. She was instructed to reverse to Glen Ridge to let off her passengers, much to their annoyance. A little while later, Milton arrived with Miss Caldwell on board. She was not happy with what she had seen. Roger, I know the accident wasn't completely your fault, Miss Caldwell began, but Titan said he warned you about this track and you just, you ignored him. What's wrong with you? Roger didn't say anything, so Miss Caldwell continued. These tracks are in bad shape. I may have to cancel the parade if they're not fixed. Goodness me, no, pleaded Milton. Roger then made a decision. Ma'am, if I work around the clock to fix this track, can the parade still go on? Miss Caldwell stared, and then she said, You willing to do that, Roger? Yes, I am. I have to make up for this. Roger was true to his word. He worked around the clock helping the workmen repair the track he had damaged. The other rangers were impressed. They had never seen Roger work this hard and often gave him encouraging work that they passed. Well, except for Milton that pretty much just gave him threatening looks if the parade gets canceled due to him. On the morning of July 4th, the track work was done. Titan came by. He was to pilot the parade down the main line. You did wonders with this track, Roger. I'm impressed. Yeah, thanks, Roger replied. Titan couldn't stand it no longer. Roger, I have to know. Why do you hate me so much? We're brothers. Because you didn't speak up for me after that accident. Roger snapped. There was a reason for that, Titan replied. What good reason could you have had to let your brother rot on a siding? The railroad we were on was going through tough financial trouble. What? Roger said he couldn't believe it. Yes, confirmed Titan. 
It got worse after our runaway. The railroad had no money to mend you. Believe it or not, I pleaded with our manager. I pleaded with him to repair you. He wanted to, but he just didn't have the money. Then why didn't you come see me and talk to me? Roger said, getting angry again. I was the only engine keeping our railroad afloat. The two other diesels that we worked with suffered a severe catastrophic failure after some bad fuel. So it only was down to me to handle all the trains alone. I was working sometimes almost, almost 24 hours. I convinced our manager to sell you so you could have a better life. Because the way things were going, I knew you were never going to be repaired. What happened to our old railroad? Roger asked. Two months after you left, the railroad closed for good and the two diesels that suffered that failure were scrapped. Had I not convinced our manager to sell you, you would have suffered the same fate. I'm so sorry. I, I treated you like this. Roger sobbed, trying not to cry. Thank you for what you did for me, Titan. And I know I haven't said this in a long time, but I love you. Titan smiled back. I love you too, Roger. Now, now come on. You have to get ready for the parade. I think I'm going to sit this one out, Roger said. I'm really tired from working all this time. Are you sure, bro? Asked Titan. Yes, smiled Roger sleepily. I'm sure. Okay, suit yourself, Titan said and rumbled away. Good morning, everyone. This is Pierce Jerome welcoming you to the Southern United Railroad Engine Parade. And we've been blessed with a beautiful day today. This year, Milton the Streamline Engine will lead on. There goes Milton, followed by Christian, Kevin, and Amber, all pulling splendid cars. They're followed by our military engines, pulling military equipment on DOX flat cars. Here comes Ian, pulling a train of hopper cars. Following them comes a beautiful sight. Larry and Taylor pulling a mixed freight and passenger train. And here comes Coletta. Hello, Coletta. And behind her is Son and Nicole pulling a streamlined passenger train. Following them is Jihad taking our local band. Nice music, guys. Very nice music. At Harmon, Roger was watching the whole parade on television. He was happy for his friends, and eventually he fell asleep. That night, all the engines gathered at Otisville for the fireworks display. Titan was a little sad. Oh, I wish Roger was here, he sighed. Just then he heard a familiar horn and Roger came rolling up beside him. Titan smiled and so did Roger. They were very happy that things were good between them now. And they have been reunited at last. <laughs> 